a the full moon. Good evening everybody and you're welcome here to a very important uh, junior match between Trim and Neighbours Boards Mill in a vital match that will decide who will reach the final. Either team still has every chance. If Trim win they should go direct to the final but it's not so clear cut just um, with score difference and so on. Navin O'Mahony's and Dunamore Ashburn are also involved. Beautiful night here in Trim as you can see by a full moon. Gorgeous night. Um, about 10 degrees as we were driving in, not a, not a breeze in the, in the place. Give you the trim, trim line out first. We start with Connie McGrenner in goals. Number two is Harry Harlan. Number three is Conor McMorrow. And number four, Liam O'Rahilly. Half back then, number five is Mark Dempsey. Number six, Sean O'Mahony. And number seven is Keen Walshy Walsh. Midfield is Mark Murray and Johnny McAvoy wearing eight and nine. Half forward line is Carlo Dwyer. Andy O'Brien wearing eleven. And Evan de Corsi Tobin wearing number twelve. Full forward line is Connor McKeown, or better known as the Gooch. Uh, Brian McKeown, uh, full forward, no relation. And number 15, Nigel Dignan, is court right full f or left full forward. The Boards Mill team that we got is a little bit changed from what they have. From what we can see, Alan Ash is wearing number one in goals. Number two is Jim Burr, the corner back, followed by three and four, the Roach brothers, Jim and Eamon. Half back line is number five, Jack Dixon. Number six, Sean Newman. And number seven, Mark Hatton. Number eight in the middle of the field is Alex Evers, and we're told Cahill Wall is wearing number nine. Yeah, Half forward then is number ten, wearing ten is Eric McKay. Centre forward, veteran Vinnie Guy. And left half forward, number 12, we will sort out in a minute for you. The full <coughs> forward line has a bit of age on its side. We have Eric Cribben wearing 13, David Farrell wearing 14, and youngster James Ash wearing 15. Um, we'll find number 12 out for you in a minute. Um, referee for this evening is Dunderryman Gus Martin, um, who takes his place in the middle of the field. Um, tonight on um, commentary you have me, CJ Murta, uh, and my good friend Fergal Lynch, and we're now wearing the new sporting Trim GA yes, yeah. Reds TV caps, and on camera tonight is the great James Andrews. <laughs> John is taking a sabbatical tonight, he's in 1A. <laughs> I to keep close to the rail, <laughs> operating out of trap one, he's keeping close to the rail. So, uh, we're ready to kick off here. Um, Fergal is timing the match. Um, and Good a beautiful night, and CJ. Gus Martin throws the ball in where Johnny McAvoy goes high and palms it down to Mark Murray. Mark's on a lovely attack and run, gone 30 yards in under 21, passes the ball through. Um, and it's Andy O'Brien who scores the first score of the game. Andy O'Brien, a lovely point from a tap down from Johnny McAvoy in the middle of the field to Mark Murray, who made a great run down the centre, gave it off to Andy O'Brien, and he scores a lucky, lucky point in the first minute of the game. Kick out coming from uh, Boards Mill will be by Alan Ash. Um, Alan's around a long time, left footer, played with my Nalvi also. Um, and Alan kicks the ball out. Not a great kick towards the middle of the field where Johnny McAvoy goes high, but a breaking ball is won by wing back Mark Dempsey. Lovely run by Mark, carries it through, gives it off to Gooch. Gooch gives it back over to Evan de Corsi Tobin, who kicks a lovely point from score. From play, two points to no score. Very lively start for Trim Flid. Yeah, great start so far, CJ. They uh, probably just the start they would have dreamed of winning the ball straight from a kick out and, or the throw in and going straight down the field and kicking the first point and then winning the next kick out and kicking the next point as well. You could see in the approach of both teams just before the game started, the trim were definitely taking this very seriously. Their warm-up had been going on for maybe a half an hour before throw-in, and they're off in the attack again here, CJ. Evan back out to Mark Murray. Mark with the ball, gives it off there to Brian McKeown, shimmies as is his usual forte, and gives it off there to Johnny Mack, who wins a grand ball in the middle of the field, and it looks to be foul, but no free. Uh, and the ref was playing advantage, so Johnny McAvoy wins his free from 30 yards out. Yeah, so we were just saying about the uh, the difference in the uh, approach of both teams before the game. Boards Middle lads were just kind of a little bit more casual in coming out, and as you said, they have a, a healthy splattering of uh, youth and experience, especially in their full forward line. But this is a free for Nigel Dignan, and he strikes with the right foot. It's going to drop short, but Alan Ash lets it through his feet. And through straight his into, the into the back of the back net. Of the net. Yeah. Very fortuitous goal. Alan was at fault there, you'd have to say. It was a speculative lob from um, Nigel Dignan, which escaped the full back and went direct towards Alan Ash, um, who unfortunately carved it into the back of the net for Boards Mill. So, very lively start for Trim, a goal there for Nigel Dignan. So, Alan's kick out coming again. 
uh, out better kick out towards the middle of the field where Evan DeCourcy and Mark Hatton go for it but it's broke on there to Eamon Roach Eamon Solis up the field he's tackled by Gooch gives a good ball in there Eamon but it's well cut out there by Harry Harlan Harry loses possession gives, tried to give it on to Sean O'Mahony on now to um, Vinny Guy who gives it back there in the middle of the field to Cahill Wall Cahill back to Vinny now back again to 12 I think he's Dylan Hoey uh, and David Farrell has it now and it's carried through here by Cahill Wall Cahill with a nice run, kicks a right footed kick towards the goals, but it's gone wide. Uh, first wide of the game, um, kicked there by um, Cahill Wall. Fred? Yeah, just on that uh, mistake by Alan Ash, you hear a lot of people you know, saying, uh, you know, goalkeepers, and especially at this level, it's basically just whoever puts their hand up last is the one that ends up in goals, which shows the importance of having a goalkeeper. Uh, a lot of balls dropping short at this level of football, it can happen. And if you have somebody confident and confident in goals that they can gather a ball like that and a decent kick out, it's certainly going to give a side a good platform. But that's a mistake from Alan Ash there. Uh, he won't thank uh, Reds TV for having it live on Facebook. I'm sure it'll be shown maybe in Kylie's or something later on for, for him to look back on. But uh, he's, he's had plenty of other good days, I suppose, playing football. That's for sure, yeah. So Nigel Dyden in the corner forward plays a grand ball in there towards Brian McKeown who takes a mark but is not given. Passes the ball on there towards, um, who's that, Carl O'Dwyer, Carl with the leggings. Cuts inside, right foot, gives the ball into Nigel, Nigel is tackled. Gives the ball in there towards, we have a cross ball there to Gooch. Oh, and it's, over it's the bar. gone over the bar for a very sloppy point there. I think the Gooch might have got it but it's gone over the bar. Great start for Trim. Score now, 1-3 to no score, with uh, three, only almost four minutes gone. Um, boards may look a little bit ragged, you'd have to say, don't they, Flid? Yeah, well, you can see that the youth and the pace and the trim legs are able to pull them all over the field, and uh, just a better handling on the ball. Uh, quicker movement of the ball and it's just having boards mill all over the place at the minute but there are some good notable names on the boards mill team I wouldn't be taking anything for granted yet for Trim even though it is a great start to be six points up after only five minutes of play so Trim regain possession there and it's on to Harry Harlan number two gives it on to Andy O'Brien Andy has Keane Walsh in support coming driving forward from half back and he's well fouled there it's by Bonna Leonard and uh, wearing number six playing centre half back um, Keen Walsh made a lovely run down the field both wing backs are moving down the field um, Fergal was the same I saw them in the last round against Dunshockton both Mark Dempsey 5 and Keen Walsh were both encouraged I think to attack and that's what has happened so far another free in there for Nigel Dowden and he coolly slots it over the bar to make it 1-1 for Nigel's personal tally and the score now is 1-4 to no score with um, with uh, just over five minutes gone in the first half. It's something very noticeable, CJ, from when uh, God be with the days when this was my level of football and uh, Jesus, we wouldn't have lived with this pace of this trim team. As uh, you were saying before, before we went on air, that it's been taken a lot serious this year and it's an effort to give the young players in the club good standard of football if they perform to this level. So it's a little bit of off the ball stuff there, Cahill Wall getting involved. Uh, with Conor M- McMorrow uh, just a little shove in the back it'll take a lot more than that for uh, to send Dudley or to send Gus to his to his pocket for a card yeah. I think Conor should know that or uh, Cahill Wall should know Conor is not the right man to be messing with to be honest fine kick in there by Cahill Wall and a great score for um, Boards Mill to make the score 1-4 to a point with uh, almost six minutes to go, or gone in the first half. Cahill Wall looks a good uh, player for Boards Mill, uh, nine in the middle of the field, Fergal. Yeah, obviously a big, strong man with plenty of uh, rugby experience, I believe. So he's uh, he's fit, he's comfortable with the ball in his hand, he's well able to move. So he's somebody that they'll be looking to get on the play as well, as is Bonner, who's a man that's uh, well able to play the game as well, has plenty of experience. Nice take there from uh, James Ash, and he's leaving it back for Cahill Wall to have another pot at. Why um, not? Sure, he, he missed. He, he scored the last one perfectly. A great kick. So why yeah. not? Not a breeze here in St. Lomans Park on the floodlit pitch. Beautiful night for football on the second of October. Big ball by Cahill. Super effort. Dropping short. It's in the square, but it's gone over the bar. It's really good score by Cahill Wall. 
yeah, to make it his second point of the game and that free was all of 45 metres. Yeah, it was just outside the 45 metre line, judging not that the lines are, are marked, but just looking where the flag is, he just seemed to be just outside the 45 metre line. As you were saying, CJ, there's not a breath to win, so he didn't have the assistance of it behind him, but in contrast, he didn't have it blown in his face either. So once he had the accuracy, he certainly had the power. Yeah, kick out coming from Connie McGrander, run the best clubman in the in the club, never misses a game, well held in the middle of the field, great catch by Mark Murray, and he wins his mark, but then is fouled. Gives a sloppy enough ball there to where Jim Roach comes in at full back, gives it to Jim Bird and back to Roach again. Roach takes it through the tackle, gives it on there to Cahill Wall, who's all over the place. Nice ball to Vinny, Vinny Guy, Vinny back there to uh, Dylan Hoy back to Jim Roach. This is good movement from Boards Mill. Cahill Wall coming through the middle, gives a sloppy enough ball off, but uh, Liam O'Rahilly comes up, out, picks up his ball. Uh, Owen is dispossessed. He was lucky enough to win, win his free there. He, he almost lost it. That so a, that's a, a lazy arm in by Eric McKay just around Liam O'Rahilly's arm, and he caught him and swung him round. It was uh, it's definitely one that Gus would give anyway. Yeah. So, play moving out. Nigel Dynan has moved out the field, uh, the corner forward. He's playing around midfield, and number two, Jim Bird, may not have the pace for him. Here comes the pace again from the half back line to Nigel Dagnan. On to Carl Dwyer. Great opportunity for Trim. Oh. Good save from Alan Ash. He made up for his first earlier uh, mistake, and here comes Evan, of course, he told him with it. He has support there from Mark Murray. Mark. Gives it back to the Gooch. Gooch has a look up and gives a nice ball to Nigel, who's creating havoc for uh, the Boards Mill backs. And that ball has gone over the bar for another score for Nigel to make it 1 2 for Nigel on the night, 1 5 for Trim, 2 points for Boards Mill, 8.5 minutes gone in the first half. Certainly redeemed himself there, Alan Ash. He did a great save and a brilliant sweep and move from Trim again, uh, using a lot of pace and short, accurate, quick hand passing cutting holes through the boards mill defence and it was a decent effort on goals I'm not sure who had the shot but an Carlo excellent, Dwyer excellent say. Good, yeah. good effort from Carlo Dwyer yeah. we should know who he is because he's wearing the tights I don't understand <laughs> uh, wearing tights but maybe you can enlighten us CJ yeah. many, uh, they weren't your, in our days many of your nine senior hurling medals were won with you wearing tights I might not have later, worn not later that night I might have worn them that night they're under head <laughs> So I think the tights were worn around the head last Saturday night, James, when uh, <laughs> there was a little bit of daylight robbery going on in Park Hodgson, but we... <laughs> there was a lot of convicts. So here's James Ash with the ball, takes on Harry Harlan, goes by Harry, Harry kind of fouls him with a lazy tackle, here's James still going on and is eventually fouled by Conor McMorrow. Gives the ball back to Davy Farrell, but really and truly this should be another shot for Cahill Wall, the way he's striking the ball. Yeah, just uh, slightly to the right of the post and uh, for a right-footed kicker, um, it, it will have the tendency to curl off to the left, but he's proved with his accuracy of the first two that he shouldn't have a problem finding the, the distance on this one anyway, whether he can start it on the outside of the right. You know, that's straight over too, yeah. This is a lovely there. kicker of the ball. That's three points for Cahill Wall, almost all from the very same position. Conor McMorrow was... The offender that time in the freeze was three frees for Boards Mill uh, and one five for Trim. And there is ten minutes gone. Um, so we're five minutes away from the water break. Nigel Dyden is creating havoc out here around the middle of the field. He's running round. Uh, and there the ball is blocked down by Johnny McAvoy towards Andy O'Brien. Andy gives a lovely ball down towards Brian McKeown and he wins it lovely there in front of it. Uh, cornerback Jim Bird. McKeown gives a nice ball on there to... Um, tights himself Carl Dwyer back to Andy O'Brien Andy gives a ball across the middle to the Gooch a great ball Gooch is on it this is ideal for the Gooch with his pace he's through and he's fouled 21 yard free and surely there'll be a card there that was um, nice right. nice football by uh, Trim finding yeah. their players all the time Flint. super again and very incisive fast football and that's just something the boards mill can't handle and that's not it's not the first type of tackle like that where it's it's desperate last ditch type of tackling where they're just you know they can't keep up with the trim player and they're having to swing out of the arm and that's probably the third or fourth foul like that maybe not directly in front of the post so that's another point to free for Nigel Dignan but it's happening throughout the field and it's it's a frustration type of tackle when a player goes by you, you just leave the hand in and end up swinging them round and it's clear and obvious but uh, as we said earlier on Gus Martin doesn't tends not to bring cards to games with him <laughs> So it is uh, one five to three points in favour of Trim, uh, and Boards Mill in possession from the kick out. 
with uh, Jim Roach. Gives it now to Mark Hatton. Uh, Hatton with a lovely bit of pace, flying on down. And gives it off there to Eamon Roach. Eamon didn't go that hard for that ball. Uh, but he went hard for that one, so he picks it and earns his free. Free two. On that last free, Nigel Diamond's free. It did go over the bar, didn't it? No, wide. Oh, it was wide, wasn't it? Was it was wide. Yeah, it was. Pay more attention, so that's. <laughs> so it remains 1 5 to 3 points. Boards Mill on the attack, gives the ball on there. Uh, jo oh, Johnny McAvoy touched the ball on the ground, and it's a free into uh, Boards Mill. I think that's twice Johnny has done that now. Here's Cottle Ball again, went for a low one. Oh. Gone wide. Yeah, God, Trevor, Trevor falling asleep and a little bit uh, annoyed with themselves. Johnny McAvoy, it's the second time he's handled the ball on the ground and you could see a little bit of frustration with him from the other defenders and they lost their concentration and let Cahill Wall take the free really quick and they could have paid the price there. But uh, it's definitely Trim were the better team but just the fouling inside there and, and mistakes inside uh, are allowing Boards to stay in the game with 1-5 to 3 points after... Just 13 minutes. That's right. I noticed a change in the board's middle team. Cahill Wall's gone centre forward and Vinny Guy's gone out around the middle of the field. I hope Vinny has the legs for the whole match and he breaks down that ball where it'll be a line ball to trim. I don't know why Liam was trying to stop it going out there, but it's a line ball to trim. Liam, Liam O'Reilly with the ball in hand. 1-5 uh, to trim, three points to um, board's mill. Three pointed frees from... Boards Mill and from Cahill Wall, but Lean Barahley gives a terrible ball off to Bonner Leonard, who's carrying the ball through, but uh, is dispossessed by Johnny McAvoy, who gives a poor ball on towards Andy O'Brien, but it's cut out by Jim Roach. Poor ball there by Johnny. Uh, clear, cleared on by Jim Roach on there towards Alex Evers. Alex goes for the ball. Conor McMorrow is with him. Uh, Conor pushes him to the ground, gets away with it. Alex still has the ball, gives it back to Davy Farrell. Davy with the right foot gives a ball in there towards. Uh, Eric Cribben, Eric picks it up ahead of Liam O'Rahilly, Eric is playing for the free, doesn't get it, gives a nice ball across to Cahill Wall, and Wall buries the ball in the back of the net, so we thought that Trim might have been on an easy pack here, and all of a sudden it's 1-5 to Trim, 1-3 for Boards Mill, Cahill Wall with the entire 1-3, a good goal, Fergal. Yeah, they just let Boards Mill build down this right hand side, and uh, instead of maybe a little bit cuter maybe conceding the free which is probably what Boards Mill have done a couple of times when Trim have cut through the heart of them Boards Mill have conceded the free rather than conceding a goal chance so Conor McMorrow had an opportunity maybe just to push the player out over the sideline or concede a free outside here but instead they let it get across and with Conor Mar McMorrow pulled out to the side they had no cover through the middle of the goals and they got in there and Conor Wall was never going to miss that or Cahill Wall was never going to miss that Cahill gives a quick ball in there towards James Ash who is the beating of Harry Harlan but it's a great save by Connie McGrenra and gathered up by Conor McMorrow out to Sean Mahoney Trim have taken a foot off the pedal here unfortunately and they've allowed Boards Mill back into this game having had a very healthy lead ball on to John McAvoy mistakes begin to creep into the Trim team back to Conor, McKeown, or Conor McMorrow gives it on to Mark Dempsey Mark loses pace he goes at the man loses possession Looks up, goes again. Mark is a great soloer, going to get hit, which he does. A good hit by Cahill Wall. Gives it back to Johnny McAvoy, back to Mark Murray. I think Trim need to be a little bit more direct. Here's Evan, who took his eye off the ball. Evan goes at Mark Hatton. Mark Hatton fouls him, and it's a free into Trim. Yeah, we, we could say that they need to go direct, and that's what they're probably going to try and do here. But what's worked for them so far has been the quick off the, off the shoulder running and moving the ball at pace. But Boards Mill seem to be getting players back and are shutting down the avenues and not allowing the ball uh, cut through there and as you said they're fouling them when they need to foul them Quick free there from Evan de Corsi Tobin to Brian McKeown who scores a lovely point fifth point for Brian and one of the best of the game Super to um, uh, put a 1-6 to 1-3 and it is the water break at the, uh, in the first half so after a very good start uh, Fergal, Trim kind of sat back a little and allowed Boards Mill attack well and Cahill Wall was the feature man for Boards Mill in the first 15 minutes. Yeah, well, as we were saying beforehand, it's it's uh, nearly a case of youth against experience and that youth and fitness and a little bit more pace here on the ball is what gave Trim their good start, but it's the experience that got Boards Mill back into the game where they stopped Trim getting through for a couple of goal chances just by cynical fouling and just little small stuff nothing overly over the top or nothing dangerous but just tugging back in the jersey and stopping trim getting through for goal chances whereas when uh, Boards Mill were going on the attack and it was perfectly 
epitomised by that goal there. Just Trim weren't clever enough just maybe to you know, concede the foul and get themselves set back up again. And when Conor McMorrow was pulled out of position from full back, it just left a huge opening in there. And when they got the ball across, Cahill Wall got on to the end of it and he wasn't going to make a mistake from there. Yeah. So, um, game still in the balance. 1-6 to 1-3. Just um, to, to uh, go ahead, Fergal. Just to give people an idea on, on how the game lies and you know the permutations that can happen. It's three teams are tied on six points at the top of the group. Trim, Navin Matneys and Dunmore Ashburn. Uh, and Trim are top by virtue of their superior goal di- or scoring difference. But Slane gave a walk over to Dunmore Ashburn in the previous round. So the county board have said that um, while the results against Slane will stand, the scores built up won't count. So uh, Trim, Trim beat Slane by eight points. So you take eight off Trim's 27, I think, or maybe nine points, whatever it was, but Trim have a scoring difference of 19. So their scoring difference is a lot healthier. So a victory here would almost certainly Secure put them the final. to the final. Yeah. But a defeat here for Trim brings Boards Mill right back into it. They'd join uh, Trim on six points as well. But if Navin and were to beat Slane and Dunmore Ashburn were to beat Dunshockland, they'd both move on to eight points. So if Trim were to lose here, they'd be out, and it would be could well be Navin and Matneys and Dunmore Ashburn. But there is also a scenario where Trim could lose here and still go through. <laughs> that if I think we have enough <laughs> permutations. <laughs> so if anybody needs a needs an aspirin or anything after trying to figure out that, yeah, yeah so Anyway, I hope you understand that. Anyway, the the likelihood is that if Trim win this match with their healthy score difference, they would go direct to a final. So we hope that that would be the permutation. So, kick out starts for the 15 after the water break from Alan Ash and all his kicks seem to be coming over this side because of his left footer. Here's Cahill Wall on the ball again. Great strong lad, Cahill Wall. Gives a beautiful ball down the wing to James Ash who comes out ahead there of Harry Harlan and goes round Harry Harlan. Still going in on the right hand side. Couple of hops there though. James Ash still with possession. Uh, taken back from him by Con- Cahill Wall again. Ball in towards Connie. Jesus, Connie missed it. Um, and Eric Cribben had a right chance to put that ball in the back of the net. All the play seems to be good play seems to be here in front of us for Boards Mill. You have Mark Hatton winning kickouts, which are all coming this way with the left foot of kick onto Cahill Wall, onto James Ash. A lot of play this side, Fergal. Yeah, and all the scores, majority of the scores coming off right footed kickers into that. Uh, coming across the goals and that was another dangerous moment there Cahill or Connell McGenner was just waiting for the ball to come into his hands and Eric Cribben really should have got some sort of a touch on I say Anton at all and it would have ended up in the back of the net Kick out there was coming towards the corner forward uh, Nigel Dignan who's out around the middle of the field as we said and this is given on there to uh, we can't make that one out I think it's Jack Dixon um, but that's uh, another wide there for um, Boards Mill to make it their uh, second wide of the game. Um, kick out coming again from Connie. Trim need to just get their hands in the ball here and play a bit of pacey football, get back down the field and get a score. Just know the game has been uh, it's been screened live in Leanhans tonight, so I hope uh, anybody up there is watching it's on in, on in the back room in Lynch's as well. So uh, hopefully our commentary isn't putting them to sleep or, or driving. Hopefully it is driving them to drink. <laughs> CJ, I think, is what uh, Here comes Tommy Alex are looking for. <laughs> with another attack back towards veteran Vinny. Back to Jack Dixon. Jack, uh, oh, Jack nearly overcarried it, but he gives it on there to Mark Hatton. Mark goes by the tackle of Evan and is fouled by Evan. Advantage from played. Oh, oh, no, Jesus. Gus. Oh, oh, Gus knocks, is knocks Gus out of the game with a hefty challenge. Oh, oh Jesus. It's all drama here at St. Norman's oh, Park. Oh, drama, <laughs> drama, drama is right. Poor old Gus got absolutely Gus got offended. nailed by, by Cahill Wall. That is definitely the hardest tackle of the game, but no better man than Gus to get up. Uh, the cameraman has just fallen asleep. So, second, nice back, kick out by Connie, just goes a little bit too long, and Lee misses it. Lee Morali misses out there, so sideline ball here to Boards Mill. Gives it on there to Eric McKay. Eric takes on Johnny McAvoy with a good bit of pace. He's still going right-footed. Eric cuts back inside. Johnny should get a block. or oh, a big high ball by Eric. Um, and out comes little Keen Walsh against a big man. But it gives it back to David Farrell. David on the left foot. And David Farrell kicks it over the bar. So, 
that's the first goal for Boards Mill from play uh, with uh, 18, almost 19 minutes played including the water break so it's 1-6 for Trim, 1-4 for Boards Mill and Trim I don't think have scored for the last 10 minutes Flid. You know, they haven't, uh, they've, they've just fallen asunder since that bright start, they looked as if they were going to run riot but it has all been Boards Mill and that's their first point from play alright, they had the goal from play of course from Carl Wall but uh, they're well on top now Boards Mill, they can't even win, a, uh, win any of their own kickouts, Trim. Uh, there goes Eric McKay again, good ball to centre back, Bonna Leonard, Bonna with the blue shorts has a kick but uh, maybe that's why Bonna centre back, um, that ball goes badly wide uh, for Boards Mill's third wide of the game. But, uh, just like to point out as well for anybody that's listening or is looking at the thing here, we managed just before the game to get to two teams and made sure everybody has the right numbers and I gave them to CJ for the commentary and the notebook was behind his back, he hasn't looked at the numbers on the jerseys <laughs> once, so you know everybody CJ, it's some commentary. <laughs> oh not so bad. <laughs> so Eric, Eric McKay has it and gives it on there towards uh, Vinny, uh, there's a Vinny guy, oh well well tackled by Mark Murray uh, and it's back now to Dylan Hoy and it's back again there to uh, Cahill Wall who has some score from play from Cahill Wall. Cahill that's 1-4 for Cahill Wall out of the tally of 1-5 for Boards Mill. Cahill Wall in the middle of the field is the standout player on this field. He's in great nick that man. Yeah super yeah I know uh, Alex Evers won't thank you for getting them mixed up with Vinny Guy but <laughs> uh, it was a super score on Cahill Wall. How, how is Cahill Wall playing at this level and he wasn't on the Boards Mill first team? There goes uh, Evan the course, great tape by Mark Hatton and Mark Hatton takes it through the tackle again and Keen Walsh is doing the correct tackle with the outside hand but Mark Hatton cuts back inside, back to Dylan Hoy who has it now, it's Dangerman Cahill Wall off for Eric McKay, Eric has a shot that's going to drop short but uh, it's, in the back. it's in the back of the net, punched in by James Ash Jesus, Tim are in a bit of trouble here lads the score now is 2-5 to 1-6 11 points to 9 with uh, 21 minutes gone and Boards Mill have taken over this game Fled. yeah well uh, it's probably only the slow nature of their start that is making this such a surprise because when you look at their last performance I think uh, Boards Mill had a had a really big win maybe not in their last performance but in the opening round of the championship they had a really big win I know it was over Slain but they scored 7-14 in that game and uh, Trim had lost to having a man he's in Boards Mill also beat them shocking by 1-11 to 1-9 uh, so they're, they're a good side Boards Mill and Trim maybe got a little bit complacent Trim on the on. attack with Gooch now to heaven of course he told him. oh it's Cor blocked out there by cornerback Jim Bird who did very well that ball was possibly heading for the net a nice move for Trim with the youngsters Connor McKeown who's 18 Evan the Corsi Tobin 18 the 18 year olds really showing their pace there but uh, that was well cut out there by Boards Mill we needed a score there and yeah. now we have a 45 for Trim which is Alan Ash, he, he stood up well and I know it was straight at him but he got the hands up and managed to tip it out for 45 so his last two saves of they have that little bit of confidence. Absolutely redeemed himself, yeah. So Evan the Corsi Tobin has taken this, pops a nice little ball to Gooch. Gooch wins oh. it well in the air, goes to the favoured right foot, is half fouled by Bonner, but he holds on to possession. Back to Johnny McAvoy who breaks two tackles on the right foot, which is his favoured. But that one is high in towards the square and wide for Trim. That's only Trim's second wide of the game. Super catch from Connor McKeown in there that only a small fella but he got up well and won that ball really well uh, as you said tried to get it onto his favourite right foot but he kind of just lost possession then and a bit of a wild swipe at it then by Johnny McAvoy um, so with seven minutes left in the first half Alan Ash kicks the ball out if it's anything like it was it's all coming this side and it comes over this way again and that ball is fielded by Cahill Wall in the middle of the field um, Cahill is having an absolute field day as is this James Ash in there but it's well robbed by uh, Liam O'Rahilly who's been moved over from right full back to left full back to Mark James um, James Ash Harry Harlan has switched to right full back Harry takes the free gives it to Mark Murray very quickly Mark gives it on there to Nigel Dagnan Nigel gives it back again to Mark Mark Dempsey's gone on an overlap he doesn't get it Johnny McAvoy's free in the middle of the field and gets it Johnny has Nigel in front and he gives it off to Nigel Nigel takes it through Mark Dempsey is through now we're 21 yards out ball in towards Gooch and oh, it's a goal for Trim goal. wonderful move there but all the way down the field you could see it from the first minute from where that started you had Nigel Dagnan gave it to Johnny McAvoy back to Nigel Dagnan Mark Dempsey made a fantastic run down the middle kept going the whole way passed it off towards um, 
Evan DeCourcy in the square who got the goal for Trim to put them back in, in the lead by one point. A good team score there. Um. Yeah, and a brilliant ball by Johnny McAvoy. His uh, hand pass ball into Nigel Dignan just really cut through, made that hole in the wall. Trim on the defense. attack again. Gooch has it at pace. He has Evan DeCourcy Toby with him again. Evan just misses. He was just about to cut in before he got the ball. Um, back out here by... Uh, Jim or Jim Roach has it for Boards Mill. Apologies if the Boards Mill mentors are standing in front of your play there, guys, but we've tried to get them back a wee bit, but it's not happening. Jim Roach has the ball attacking, takes the ball through halfway, passes the ball on to James Ash, who's having a very good game, but they put the pace of Liam Riley over on him now, Liam O'Reilly. Ash still has the ball. Free out here is Dylan Hoey. Dylan back to Ash. Ash with the right foot, he seemed to be very right footed, but we're not copping onto it. Back out to Dylan Hoy, back out again here to Alex Evers. Finney Guy is free in the middle, Finney has a look up, gives a nice ball in there towards Eric McKay. Eric takes it on again, Eric has great pace with the right foot, has he a pop at goal? Pops it up, but it's gone wide for Bordesville's fourth wide of the game. And all the action on the right hand side again, Flid. Yeah, and just getting back to that second goal from Trim, it was a brilliant true ball from Johnny McAvoy that set uh, Nigel Dignan free. And uh, Nigel then played a clever ball inside, and he was actually taken out at late, but uh, he managed to get himself up off the ground again to see Evan DeCourcy Tobin just knocking the ball into the net. So it was a, a good goal for Trim, and just typical of the incisive, short, quick passing that they're capable of. Yeah, I was kind of advocating a bit longer kick or kicking, but really when you have players with pace, we should be working it through the hand. Here's Harry attacking now, Harry Harlan. Harry is left foot, did he overcarry it? He looked, here's Mark Dempsey with the pace again. Lovely touch with his left foot. Back to Evan de Corsi Tobin. Back outside to Mark Murray. Bit of champagne football here by Trim. Can we get a score at the end of it? Mark plays a lazy owl ball in. And uh, that's taken there by Alan Ash. Bubbled Alan. a bit flat that time at the end of that. <laughs> champagne move there, all right. <laughs> Mark, Mark, Murray coming, or Mark Hatton coming up the field with the ball, well, well tackled or well shadowed by Evan de Corsi. That's uh, cut out nicely by Kian Walsh. It's Johnny McAvoy has the ball. CJ, there is, for, for this standard, it's a fantastic pace. Gooch is on again. Gooch is half the secret to this trim attack, I think, if he wins the ball. Mark Murray slows it down a bit, back to Evan de Corsi. Evan could have a shot from there, gives it off to Gooch again. Gooch has a look around. A little bit ponderous here by Trim, but gives it on to Mark Dempsey, who's moved down from right half back. He's an attacking half back, Mark. Back to Gooch. Gooch is on board again. He's fouled, but no free given. Evan has the ball. Evan from 30 yards out with a nice kick, but it's gone wide for Trim's third wide of the game. Three wides for Trim, four wides for Boards Mill. Trim 2 6, Boards Mill 2 5. Four minutes left in the first half. Yeah, Conor McKeown there is really, he's the player that everything is, that Trim are looking to feed everything through and he's good, he's confident on the ball as well and he's very comfortable on it. He, he doesn't get rushed or doesn't get panicked. He just needs a little bit more movement when he does have the ball. He needs the player to run off his right shoulder or left shoulder and carry that ball at pace because when Trim do that, it's clear that that's when they're causing Boards Mill plenty of problems. But if Trim slow it up, it allows Boards Mill to get back and get men behind the ball and they tend to break it down. Bad left footed kick out from Alan Ash again. Won by Mark Murray in the middle of the field. Fouled by Alex Evers. Mark should do it quick if he could. Gives it off there to the tights, which is Carl O'Dwyer. Carl goes at the player into Johnny McAvoy. Johnny recycles back to McKeown. Can McKeown get another haymaker? No, it's gone in a bit short and Nigel Dyden goes for it. And is ball has gone wide for Trim's fourth wide of the game. Just looking at uh, Alan Ash's kickouts there, he's kind of putting his team under a little bit of pressure and it reminds me again harping back to my good old days when Dan O'Leary used to be a regular corner back to me being the goalkeeper and Danny said the only people that were ever put under pressure from my kickouts were my own corner backs. <laughs> so Alan Ash's kickouts are reminding me are bringing me back to those day, dark old days. <laughs> Just on the technical thing, I'm surprised Trim don't fill this side because yeah. the ball is coming this way every like he can't kick the ball to the right so everything is curling with his left foot over well, here again look. I think every I think Cahill Wall is his target for everything and uh, they tend to be curling all right but his target is Cahill Wall I'm surprised Trim are just leaving Johnny McAvoy to compete with him that if ball run there he'll win everything very well done by Mark Murray on to Johnny who's attacking with pace gives the ball on to McKeown but it's cut out by Bonner Leonard Bonner will run 
and he gives it on there to Danger Man Cahal Wall. Cahal has been met by Sean O'Mahon. He gives the ball on there to Alex Evers. Alex Evers on to David Farrell, the full forward. Colin McMorrow's a bit off him. Ball in there. And Lima Rahley is doing a little better now on James uh, Ash, which uh, that was the change that was needed to cut out that threat. And uh, Rahley keeps going. Rahley on now to the Gooch. Danger Man should take on his man, which he does. And he goes round uh, wing back or cornerback Eamon Roach. Eamon has Brian McKeown inside. He's pulled out of it by Jim Bird. Uh, and the strength there of the boards mill backs just got over the gooch um, there's a bit of a mismatch there with the gooch and well, Jim he's Roach he's swinging away he's not <laughs> mismatch or not he wasn't backing down and that was for sure it's just heading into the last 30 seconds of the half and it's trim leading by a point two six to two five and it is a tight game they kind of settled back into it CJ after that period of boards mill dominance uh, speculative ball in by Sean into Carl Dwyer Carl at pace goes by the full back two he's through and he probably does the right thing Carl gets his uh, first goal of the game by tapping that ball over the bar he could have went for a major but he um, he took the, the right option just prior to half time to put two points between the teams yeah, I'm not sure if there was two hops in there or not he kind of took a hop to, uh, into the challenge and uh, turned out of the challenge and then took another hop and put it over the bar but uh, Seeing as I thought Nigel Dyson had scored a free earlier on, maybe my eyes are still deceiving me. <laughs> it's late at night, it's way past my Friday night bedtime. <laughs> so here's Alan Ash with the kick out again for Boards Mill. That's half And time. Gus blows the whistle right on the button at half time. So, score at half time, trim 2 7, Boards Mill 2 5. Very little between the teams, Fergal. Yeah, well, we thought after the first, uh, I think it was only five. Four or five minutes, Trim were 1 3 or 1 4 to no score up. We thought at that stage Trim were going to absolutely run riot, but Cahill Wall came into the game and he's just been unmarkable and un, you know, it's very difficult for Trim to try and stop him. And he just almost single handedly dragged Boards Mill back into the game. And with their second goal, they managed to go a point ahead. Um, and luckily enough, Trim got that goal back pretty quick. And it was typical of what Trim have done well and what it's, has been a consequence of their. Uh, sharp passing quick movement running off the ball has gotten trimmed the scores and put them into this lead that they lead by two points at half time but they need to do more of that because I don't think this boardsman team are going away yeah no they're not I, I think possibly that the longer we, we will have every chance with the legs we have I, I think that we're probably younger and fresher but I thought that at the start and look how well uh, Boards Mill came by I think our three 18 year olds it just shows you Mark Dempsey playing a wing back Evan de Corsi Tobin here and Gooch they're all the one age 18 and they have great pace when Mark comes forward he comes with great great gusto up the field um, and the others are making their, their space uh, to allow them run through but I think we need plenty more of that yeah, well, you were advocating halfway through it for uh, a little bit more direct ball, and that mightn't do, do any harm either, um, because when when it does slow down, or when one somebody else other than those three get the ball, it does slow down. So when they aren't an option, maybe they do need to look at going a little bit more direct, because when it does slow down, boards may are getting players back, and they're making it more difficult for Trim to create the score. So when the three 18-year-olds that you mentioned, when they're not free or available for a pass or on the ball, then Trim need to have another option and maybe uh, Johnny McAvoy or Nigel Dignan or somebody else can get on the ball Mark Murray maybe push in a little bit deeper and deliver a long ball in then when, when the three boys mm. aren't aren't available but yeah, we, it's, it's, um, it's we might have a word about the intermediate in a second just one more word about um, Cahill Wall looks a really good player for this standard doesn't he? Yeah well that's what I was saying there They're a, it's a, a second team for Boards Mill and they must have a really strong midfield in their first team if Cahill isn't getting into it I'm, I don't know maybe somebody in the club would tell you that he just maybe hasn't been able to commit to the first team and, and put in the work that the first team might have looked for because they actually went quite well in the junior championship I know they didn't win um, I don't, not sure if they won any of their games, but they were only beaten by a point or two in a few of the games. So Boards Mill had a, had a decent enough year. Um, I think they might have won their last game, which kept them uh, off the bottom. But they were definitely an improving force in the football. Uh, they have an intermediate hurling final as well to look forward to. So, you know, there's a good buzz around Boards Mill Club. And, and a bit like Trim here, there's a good buzz around the club. And when things are going well in the club, it all tends to feed down. Um, so when the senior, when the intermediate football team are going well, it fed down to the second team, which won the Premier FC Division Two, and it's feeding down to these lads who are uh, on the verge of a Division Eight final as well. So, mm. 
Just a word about the intermediate. Uh, I don't know, did we do a preview on it on Reds TV or no, what? Where we didn't? Uh, I think a bit like uh, Dublin, they, they went to ground and uh, media were banned from. Okay. <laughs> well, what's your prediction for tomorrow, Fergal? Well, well, look at I, I think the Hearted very definitely wants to see Trim win, and uh, I don't think the, the head could disagree either. I think from what we've seen of both teams, they're both very strong teams, both very attack minded and capable of racking up big scores. Balnebracchi had a reputation before of uh, churning out games and grinding them out and very strong defensively and winning games eight points to six and you know one seven to four points and tight games very good defensively but not getting the scores but they've added that to their game uh, two corner forwards young Thompson uh, is an exceptional little player really danger man in the corner for them and then they have David Carroll and Damien Carroll as well and players like Juicy O'Connor coming through from midfield and uh, you see Seamus Curry in full forward for them as well is a real decent danger that they have and then they've good defenders as well Juicy drops back and been a former county corner back he knows how to defend properly and Nicky Judge as well is in there so they have a good again a good mix of youth and experience in Balnebracchi and Trim will have to be careful that they don't repeat what happened last year where you know a big win in the semi-final go into the final maybe not as red hot favourites but going into the final as favourites that you know they get hit by sucker punches like they did last year mm. and leave gaps because if they leave gaps and they get hit by sucker punches Van de Bracchi will certainly will certainly uh, punish them and uh, but I think this trim team are it's their six or seven changes from the team that played in the intermediate final last year and those changes no disrespect to the lads who endowed the team those changes have certainly improved the team mm. again young good strong players that come in you look at uh, Bulger in a full back the job he's done this year for me has been brilliant you see Birmingham the amount of turnovers that, that he brings to the team and when teams are on the attack he managed to turn over and then it's quick and it's sharp and when new players inside like Owen O'Connor and Aaron Lynch they're as good as anything in the county senior intermediate or junior or even into county teams um, I, I don't think Andy McEntee is a whole lot better than uh, Aaron Lynch or Owen O'Connor yeah I was going to give you a viewpoint but you actually she wouldn't shut your mouth <laughs> 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 so we, well, well, I don't get a word in edges at home I have to come out so we're going to go back live uh, now in one minute <laughs> alright oh, just lads I wish us the best of luck tomorrow thanks TJ here, put that on there for a sec. Just TJ Riley just wants to wish Trim well tomorrow. Yeah, it's a long, it's a long time since I was senior in Trim. And Eleven years. I grew up in the sixties. There was some great football in Trim. I came in as a young lad. I loved football because my father was a great footballer with Minolte, and I love football. And I'd love to see senior in Trim again. Thanks, so TJ. Luck to you. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. So we're, we're, that's all, eh? <laughs> We're back started here at the start of the second half where Cahill Wall resumed where he uh, started the, or was in the first half by challenging, char charging forward back to Vinnie Guy. This is back to, I think they have Sean Newman on now, a sub. Um, yeah, number 20, Sean Newman is on. And that's a ball back out the field towards Vinnie Guy. Uh, Jack Dixon back to Vinnie Guy, back to Bonner Leonard. And Bon is bursting through, he's through. Can he be stopped? Shot Ooh. back of the net from Bonner Leonard and a desperate start for Trim uh, to make the score 3-5 for Boards Mill, 2-7 for Trim with uh, just less than a minute gone in the first half. Trim never got their hands in possession from the throw-in whatsoever and uh, Vinnie Guy was very instrumental in passing the ball around, gives the ball on to Bonner Leonard who broke a few tackles and buried the ball in the net. Three goals for Boards Mill. Kick out from Connie, Connie goes direct to Evan De Corsi, who's fouled for the free. Um, and not a good start of the second half. Gooch on the ball again, looking dangerous. Tapping the ball on his toe, gives it off there to uh, Evan De Corsi Tobin. Evan on to Gooch again. Gooch, 14 yards out, kicks the ball for Trim's fifth wide of the match. Not a great shot from the Gooch there, but a nice move from Trim. We would nearly always consider the town goals, the scoring goals in this pitch, Fergal, so for, for whatever advantage is going, Boards Mill have it in this half, although there's no wind whatsoever. Yeah, and, and they made a great start to it, a bit like Trim in the opening half, getting a score straight away off the throw in. It was Boards Mill that time, only this time it was a goal, and uh, it just puts them that one point up, and another great boost for them, and they're going to have to do something about Cahill Wall, because just leaving it one-on-one -on -one isn't working. No. 
and Bonner Leonard who started the second half with tremendous gusto got the ball in the middle of the field it's going to the 21 gives the ball off there too Jesus Bonner was floored and no free lucky enough for trim there I think Bonner now, we might have made a meal of it, but he was definitely fouled after he passed the ball, and I think Conor McMorrow might have taken the opportunity to um, you could certainly to hear, in. You could certainly hear the collision, uh, and, and in the words of Arsene Wenger, I didn't see it. <laughs> but uh, you could certainly hear the collision there, and it was a very penetrating run by Bonner. Yeah. He, was, uh, he certainly had trim on their heels and in trouble, but uh, when he did lay off the ball, then... Um, it might have been Conor McMorrow and maybe Bonham might think twice about I think embarking on a run like that again. I think again. Uh, Conor may have had it in his head to put a hit in at some stage. The long ball into the square was causing Trim terrible trouble. Oh. Gone over the bar again. That came the whole way from the sideline. I think it was Mark Hatton or maybe Cahill Wall. Uh, it was Cahill Wall again. 1-5 for Cahill Wall. He's destroying Trim in the middle of the field. Um, we don't seem to have any answer to, to the way Wall is playing tonight. And the score now is Trimmer down two points, 3-6 to 2-7, with three minutes played in the second half. Kick out from Connie McGrath, McGrenra goes out towards midfield again and substitutes Sean Newman is on the ball, gives it to Davy Farrell. Davy takes on Connor McMorrow. Davy has it, gives a high kick ball in towards the square again. Connie's in trouble again, but he palms the ball out this time towards Lee Morahaly. Liam takes it on, Nigel Dyden is free down his left hand side but he opts to give it to Mark Dempsey, Mark to Conor McMorrow, Conor McMorrow back to Liam O'Rahilly, uh, Liam O'Rahilly gives it down the ring to Nigel, Nigel on to Mark Dempsey who'll surely go for a run, puts the ball in his toe, beats a couple and is fouled. Um, and Wall and is getting the card Wall looks thing. like there is a yellow card coming from the Dunderry ref, he did bring his cards for Yeah he did, well we'll just wait and see them. <laughs> It's getting close to hot Christmas to maybe there are <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe there's snow on a few of them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was definitely it was a cynical foul and uh, it probably wasn't been far off a black card offence. Yeah. A yellow card is kind of a bit of a let off for that tackle. It was very clear what he was looking to do. So Nigel gives a terrible ball into Gooch. Um like a very high ball and Gooch is marked the man at six foot and Gooch is five foot six so not the happy ball there for Gooch out to Eamon Roach here again Eamon back to Jack Dixon Jack Chimmies gets by the man and still in possession Jack finds Eamon Roach again <coughs> ball on there to Eric McKay excuse me and Eric takes on Harry Harlan Harry puts in a somewhat of a tackle gives it on there to Cahill Wall again Back out to Davy Farrell. Davy, who got the last point, seems to overcarry, but if they don't foul him, Trim might get the benefit here. Still David Farrell, but he, and he's pushed to the ground by Harry Harlan. Still no free, and Trim do get the benefit. Um, that was six or one, half a dozen of another, yeah, wasn't it? There was a couple of rash uh, fouls went in there by Trim, and you were going, why are you jumping into a tackle like that? But uh, they got away with a few of them there. And I think Johnny McAvoy might have got away with another handling on the ground there. But, uh, if, Johnny, if Johnny got done for that, it would have been his third of the game. Nigel kicks the ball, a great ball into Carl Dwyer. Carl has loads of space. He's away from Bonner. He cuts back inside, looking for Evan, the course he told him. Mark Dempsey's ahead if he sees him. And oh, geez, we're lucky that we didn't just get the ball into Mark there, but it's a foul. And it should be a free uh, in for Trim. And the ball has been carried forward a bit for a little bit of afters from the board's middleman, which leaves Nigel Dyden's task much more simple from the free. And Trim need to get a free to make it their first point of the second half. Just checking Twitter to see if there's any updates from any of the other games in this group. But, uh, Nothing coming through from any of the other clubs, nothing from Amatnes and nothing from Slane. So Nigel gets his uh, third point of the game, 1 3 for Nigel, 2 8 for Trim, 2 8 to 3 6. Trim one point down, seven minutes played in the, in the second half, eight minutes to the water break. Sub warming up the far side for Trim, I think it's Colin McGrath who's a back. He could be coming on there for, um, well, we'll see who they're bringing on. Uh, kick out comes again up oh Carl Wall dictating this match in the middle of the field finds a great ball and finds it on there for David Farrell who's acres of space ahead of Colin, Colin, uh, Colin McMorrow gives it on to 
Who's that, Alex Evers? Seven, yeah. And it's wide. gone wide, a very bad wide. I have a feeling Colin McGrath might be coming on for Conor McMorrow. Because David Farrell, who's a big, strong man, is after getting at least four balls from Conor McMorrow in the second half. So even, Colin, that, even that kick out that time from Alan Ash, and Mark Murray had a hold of uh, Cahill Wall's arm to try and slow him down, and he still couldn't stop him from getting up to, to win the ball. It's a great catch in midfield. It looks as if it's probably Mark Murray that's going off. Is uh, it, uh, I'm not sure now. Uh, Johnny, no, it's Johnny, uh, Johnny, Johnny McAvoy's been, called, been, been called ashore so Johnny had moved from midfield to wing forward so we've put Colin McGrath in centre back we have yeah, it's centre back. Sean Mahoney's now gone midfield to Mark Cahill Wall and Mark Murray is still midfield so basically the change was Johnny McAvoy's gone off Colin McGrath centre back Sean Mahoney midfield with, I'm sure with an eye to keeping an eye on um, Cahill Wall. Kick out from Colin McGrath comes to Evan de Corsi, but he's lost the ball. Uh, and ref Gus has blown the whistle. Nobody knows what he's doing here, actually. I Is think it? it's a head injury to a trim player over on the far side, or definitely an injury. Um, and he's the hand to the head. But. Uh, Cahill Wall is the one that's causing all the trouble and it's very simple if Trim can cut him out of the game they're more than three quarters of the way there because everything is going through him uh, and if he's not on the ball he's making runs off the ball and pulling players away he's just uh, he really is the standout player for Boards Mill and he's some of the Trim are struggling to contain that's for sure he, um, you could double up on him nearly because Jesus, he, it's such a one man show that uh, we really need to counteract his performance. Yeah, well, I'm not sure that uh, there's some of the other players need the close attention that they're getting. Uh, so even the sub coming in there for Trim, I'm not sure who you said the sub was. Colin McGrath. Colin McGrath, sorry, coming in. I'm not sure he needs to stick touch tight to Vinny Guy that he could press up, especially on the boards mill kickout, that he can press up and get Mark Murray in around. Um, uh, who the centre back as well had gone on to so Sean maybe, Mann. maybe triple up and up from the kickouts. Yeah, it might seem like you're creating a lot of space for other players, but uh, Vinny's not going to make that burst from centre forward to get on to the kickouts, the boards mill kickouts, and neither is uh, the the other wing forward on the other side. Yeah, so maybe Trim just need to cut out that primary source of possession for boards mill because Cahill is dominating it, and unless they get a hold of him, they're not going to win this game. Yeah. So the delay was for injury to Evan de Corsi Tobin, who's up now, and star man Cahill Wall has the ball in his hand with a sub coming on here. I think it's uh, Keane Walsh, who's warming up. Keane is multi-purpose, but he's been playing in the forwards recently. Cahill Wall gives the ball on there to Eric McKay, but he misses it. Uh, Bonner draws a boot on it, and um, it's collected by Mark Dempsey. Mark can go. Gives it on to Mark Murray. Two Marks combining. Back to Mark Dempsey again. Keep Mark going. should go with that because he can beat everybody in front of him. Keep going, Mark. Mark carries the ball. He's still at the 14. He's got now at the, t at the 14 yard line and he's fouled. And oh, he oh. kicks it across the, the square. He could have taken his point there. Clearance there from Bulls Mill goes direct to Eric McKay, who gives the ball on to Bonner, who will show a real pace here too. Bonner passes the ball to Davy Farrell. Davy shimmies around. Um, Conor McMorrow has a shot in high ball very good score excellent score by Davy Farrell just this brilliant counter attack Trim really should have had a score down to our right hand side here a brilliant run by Mark Dempsey real pace and real directness but when he got to within 13 metres it was like he had a nosebleed and uh, didn't know what to do and ended up doing nothing and just right on the counter attack and that was a swift counter attack from Boards Mill not something the style that we've really seen from them but a fine score there that came from the goal line to over the bar in about 30 seconds yeah, Keane Walsh less. has replaced um, Evan de Corsi who was injured and he goes in a corner forward and the Gooch is out a wing forward uh, Connie McGrath with the kick out for Trim Trim two points down 3-7 to 2-8 11 minutes gone in the second half Wall went for it again nearly got it but was uh, dispossessed by Sean O'Mahony down into the arms of Keane Walsh who was fouled gives a bit of a dodgy ball up to um, the other Keane Walsh and the Gooch takes on his player gives it off there to Keane Walsh um, on to Nigel Dignan Nigel back to Sean Mahoney Sean back to uh, little Keane Walsh who misses the ball and is dispossessed by Jim Bird and a couple of big men in there Jim Bird finds possession and gives it off there to Eric um, 
to Cahill Wall again. Gives the ball down to James Ash, who's been well played by Liam O'Reilly since he went on him, but this time he goes round him. Liam follows back. James Ash is pretty right footed. He cuts back in, goes back for the right again. Liam stays with him. High ball, which is causing Trim trouble. McMorrow goes forward with Davy. Oh. On to Bonnet. This could be danger. Goal for Boards Mill. Goal for Boards Mill. Bonnet Leonard causing massive trouble in the second half. Two goals for Bonnet. And every time a high ball comes across, we're in trouble, Flid. Yeah, and it looked as if Liam O'Reilly was after doing a good job and James Ash over on that right-hand side. and um, He had forced them just to hoof in a hopeful ball into the centre. But uh, just uh, Conor McMorrow didn't deal with the ball off David Farrell and Bonner just broke onto it. And just that little extra yard of pace that he has there just got him away and a, a super finish. Conor McGrenna had no chance. So kick out comes Mark, Mark Murray broke it down to Nigel Dyden and Mark has given the ball back, carries the ball on to the 21, finds Brian McKeown who's gone out with the game here in the second half, Brian on the ball, left footed ball, a lovely ball across to Sean O'Mahony, Sean needs to give to one of the scorers, on to, or oh, poor ball on there, and it's really well taken out there by, by Mark Hatton, Mark Hatton charges down the field at pace again and gives it back to Alex Evers, Alex gives a lovely ball in again towards Davy Farrell, but this time it's won by uh, Eric McKay, he'll have to turn back for the right, has a shot, Connie taps it over the bar for another score for um, Eric McKay. Well, that's the first of the game to put 4 8, trim. Two eight. Four eight to 2 8 down. Boards Mill, six points ahead, two minutes to the water break. Trim in real trouble here, Fergal. And there were seven points down early in the game, so that's a 13 point turnaround uh, since about 10 minutes into the game. It's been a, it's been really all Boards Mill, and that's that. That uh, goal, that second goal that Trim got the, towards the end of the first half, they haven't kicked on from that at all. Uh, it looked as if it was going to get them back into the game and settle them, but they need to go back to what they were doing well, and they've kind of abandoned that game plan. So, another Trim attack is broken up, not by great boards mill defending, but just by sloppy play by Trim, who just couldn't get their hands on the ball. But Keane Walsh did well there to win his ball back. I think that's Keane Walsh. There's two Walshes on the on the subs, brothers, Keane and Ushing. That's Keane, though. Back here to Sean Mahoney, who gives it back to Colin McGrath. McGrath brings it forward onto Nigel Dagdon. Nice ball by Nigel. Gooch is inside, but Trim need a score here to settle things. Gives it on there to Carlo Dwyer. Dwyer with the right foot, back across the square. It's gathered by big fullback Jim Roach, who was ridiculously grabbed to the ground by Brian McKeown for a needless free. And... Uh, that, that would be at least a yellow, if not a black card, yeah, from the kill. That was just lazy and pure frustration, and he knew it himself. Like he just he swung him round, like he was trying to lead him on a merry dance, and just continued walking straight out to Gus. And he'll be lucky if this is some black. Stephen Doyle is coming on the field for Trim now. It'll be either who has a hamstring injury. It'll be either Andy O'Brien or Brian McKeown going off. I would say uh, McKeown gets yeah. a yellow. Lucky enough with a yellow. It is Andy O'Brien coming off. Stephen Doyle going in full forward, McKeown going out centre half forward. So Trim are in a, a bit of disarray, Fergus. This will be a change of tactic, so uh, you'd imagine there's going to be a lot more long high ball pumped into Stephen Doyle in there on the edge of the square. And it's not, it's a tactic that they've probably tried kicking in wrong ball into Conor McKeown. Uh, as you said, he, he's five foot six, been marked by somebody who's six foot one. It wasn't, wasn't working out for him, so maybe with, with Doyle in there, it might work out a little bit better. But they need to get something and quick. They do. Uh, nicely won back there by Mark Murray. On to the Gooch. Gooch on to Nigel Dyden. Can we get a score here? On for Carl Dwyer. Back to N Nigel. He should tap it over the bar. He's well well tackled by Bonna Leonard. Uh, just stood his ground. Mark Murray has it. Back to Brian McKeown. McKeown will have a shot here. McKeown. Nice shot by McKeown. Over the bar. Second point of the game. Great score just for Tim Nigel, but we will need more than that. There's the water break. Fergal and we are five points down. Trim 2 9, Boards Mill 4 8. Yeah, 15 could, minutes to go. You could just even see there when uh, Boards Mill were coming out of defence, and it was a great turnover by Trim. But as soon as they turned it over, Boards Mill rallied back and did seven men around the one Trim that did on the ball. So we were questioning early in the, in the game would Boards Mill have the legs to be able to keep going? And uh, what the older lads maybe are, are lacking in the legs, the younger lads have given them an injection in there and they're fighting and th they look hungrier than Trim for every break and ball and when they haven't got possession, they're working harder than Trim to get back and make sure that they're not going to concede any easy scores. We saw it in the, 
the goal opportunity for Mark Dempsey and maybe 15 seconds later the balls uh, you know they break and the balls over the bar down the other end they're hungrier and they're sharper at the minute yeah I, um, Bonner Leonard's two goals the second half been outstanding. I mean, he 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 has taken the ball from midfield, broke through a couple of tackles, carried it through, and buried the ball in the back of the net. I mean, they've changed the game. Yeah, and then the second one, he he just got on the end of a breaking ball, and that use of pace over the five yards got him free of a man, and he was left one and one and buried it in the back of the net. So when you players like that, especially at this level, they're uh, they're just going to punish you. And Trim haven't got going. It's a really really bright start. It's you know, as we're saying, a 13 point turnaround in the space of not even 30 minutes, it's a huge turnaround. Yeah, yeah. But there were one fourth, was it, to no score up after 10 minutes, yeah. And then to be to be five points down, just that's that's a, a major turnaround, yeah. So the shoe is very much on the board's middle foot at the minute. Um, the water break will be over in a minute, and we'll um. And we we'll uh, get going again. The the whistle is gone. Um, yeah, I suppose <laughs> John Andrews would be uh, wouldn't be pleased with it if we didn't me- uh, mention our sponsors of Reds TV, James Griffin, uh, Tom Hanna, and Liz Leanahan for their continued sponsorship and uh, all the water provided for all trim teams this year, and notably also uh, our long term sponsors, Super Value, Stephen and. Ivan Nally for their continued unbelievable support of Trim GA. Just a reminder for anybody that can't get into Part and unfortunately it's only 100 from each club allowed in for the intermediate game tomorrow. It is available on MeGA TV. Uh, I think it's a tenner to get the game. Uh, I'm not sure how much it is to get the full weekend package, but it's a tenner to get the game on MeGA TV and uh, we expect it to be a cracker, so tune in for that one. So kick out coming from Boards Mill, 15 minutes left for Trim to retrieve this game. Uh, Alan Ash with the kick out. Gun comes to the right. Oh Jesus, and Brian McKeown is nearly killed with a, with a challenge there, but it was absolutely perfectly fair. He went for the ball in the middle of the field, and I think it was Eric McKay and Cahill, McKay, or Cahill Wall that came jointly on top of McKeown, but he's up on his feet. So Bonna Leonard has the ball ready to take... Um, the free for Boards Mill. We'll have to get on to uh, Tommy Lean and see if we can get a few pairs of thermal red TV socks <laughs> for these games, CJ. David Farrell on the ground, tackled by Conor McKeown. He's kind of over carrying it, David, but he got away with it. Gus is doing the amiable job of keeping it alive. James, McK- James um, Ash shimmies inside, gives it back to Eric, Mc- oh, Eric Mc- McKay through the ball, actually. But high ball again, that's trouble for Trim. Oh, oh and just gone wide. That was Cahill Wall inside in the square, or just outside the square, panned the ball and it just went wide. If that went in, game was over, Fergal. He is human after all, CJ. You know, it, <laughs> it dropped kind, dropped well for him and he, he got a fist on it, but it just dropped, to the, thankfully for Trim, dropped to, to the left of the post and wide. So yeah. Trim really need a score. It's uh, 2-9 to 4-8 and we've only got... Uh, 13, 13 minutes, minutes left. left so they're under pressure good kick out from score. Connie McGrath in the middle of the field up goes Mahoney but he just palms it down there to Dylan Hoey who's had a quiet match here comes McKeown McKeown has done a bit better since he came out centre forward almost over carries but gives the ball into Barney who flicks it off there to Carl Dwyer back to Barney and Mark Murray is through uh, uh, 30 yards from goals Mark gathers his ball he has uh, Keane Walsh ahead of him Keane gives it back to Barney, who I think, uh, uh, Barney, oh, he has a bad hamstring, Barney, so he may not be able to shoot. Back out here to Keane Walsh, who throws the ball into Barney. Barney hit, takes the tackle, has a shot at goal, but Barney, Barney's hamstring is at him. Yeah, he but did th- say before the game that his hamstring was at him, and he's well able to run, but he just can't kick the ball. He, he was pointing that out to, uh, to us just before the game, so it was clear there that he was struggling to take on the shot. So... Brian McCone puts the ball down from the 50 and kicks it back to Colin McGrath, who's had a nice little game since he came on. Gives the ball back to Carl Dwyer. Back to McGrath. McGrath knows his well experienced, takes on the men. He's a strong man, McGrath, but he loses the ball to Bonner Leonard again. Leonard with the ball, gives the ball down the wing towards Dylan Hoy. Dylan with his marker, Keen Walsh, but he gives a poor ball back. And here's Mark Dempsey. Mark toe taps with the left, gives it on again to Keen Walsh. We have two Keen Walshes on the field now for Trim. This is back in on to Sean O'Mahony and a poor, poor ball, but Gus gives the advantage of a free that was to one of the Keane Walshers there. 
Looks like the board's moved. Steven Sub Gibbons. Stephen Gibbons is going to come on the field. Um, I'd say they're taking maybe Dylan Hoy off. He's had a poor, poor couple of minutes there. Stephen, Stephen Gibbons um, goes on, and it is Dylan Hoy coming off the field. Nostradamus Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't like me as a selector. <laughs> yeah. They're wasted up they're here. Wasted here. <laughs> Anyway, more important matters. 12 minutes remaining, or 11 minutes remaining, still trim five points down. I wouldn't write them off yet. Back to McKeown, back to Carl Dwyer. They're attacking. Bud Miller drifting back. McKeown going for number three. Yes. And scores a great score. McKeown is keeping trim in the game here. That's his third point of the game. Yeah, kicked some brilliant scores. Some from very good scores from, from uh, Brian. So, now with... Ten minutes to go, ten and a half to go, trim are four points behind. Two ten to trim, four eight to boards mill. Just don't need to panic just yet. They're, they're still very much in the game and they are and Trim uh, had a lot of the possession for the last five minutes. Maybe those age and legs might start to tell now on some of them. Kick out Shawnee. Oh, oh Shawnee, I thought he did the right thing, Shawnee Mahoney, but Cahill Ward gathered it. And it's on here for Eric McKay. Eric has very right foot, cuts back in on the right. Blocked though there by McGrath. Bonna, here comes the run again, and it is McCall Wall, the two danger men, Bonna and Carl Wall. And it's a great score. Jesus Wall is having some match. Bonna and himself are combining, and they're ripping Trim apart. Score now. Boards Mill 4 9, Trim 2 10. Five minutes in it. Five points in it. Nine and a half minutes to go. How long, how hard had Trim to work for their last score and Boards Mill just go down the field and in two passes and ten seconds save the ball over. Oh, for the of course. They do seem to be scoring much easier, to be honest. Here's Gooch on the ball. We need Gooch. Oh, Gooch just couldn't make that ball and it's got out for a sideline where Jim Roach has it over there and he kicks it back there to Sean Newman. Sean carries the ball down, has played Grant since he came on and gives a really good ball towards David Farrell. Um, Farrell still on possession is holding the ball up well Colin McGrath is on him McKeown is on him Gucci re wins oh, the ball yeah. for Trim Gucci should give it off here to Nigel carries it on Bring it with you. Gucci oh he's nailed there by uh, Sean Newman on to Mark Dempsey here comes the pace Mark with the ball carries the ball on gives the ball off to Little Keen Walsh gives it on to Nigel Dagnan Nigel still has it, 30 yards from the goals, gives it back to McKeown, back to Nigel, takes on St Stephen Gibbons, has a shot at goal, they'll pass it over here to Mark Murray, Mark cuts inside, Trim need a score here, gives the ball in towards yeah. Barney, Barney needs a shot, Put it over the bar. gives it back to Nigel, should take his point, and over it goes, four points between the teams, Boards Mill 4-9, Trim 2-11, still... Nigel Dighton could be the key here for Trim. He's a bit of a cooler head and calm head in there. So they need to get him onto the ball. A great vision there to pick out Mark Murray. And if uh, Mark had just a little bit more of a step, he could have got through on the goals that time. But at least he got a score from it. It wasn't a waste of attack. Exactly. Eight and a half minutes left. Trim far from over the game, but they will need to. Uh, they may need a goal, I think, to get back into it. Um, uh, Play moving down the field for Boards Mill again from Jim Roach to, to substitute Stephen Gibbons. Gibbons gives it on there towards James Ash. James, uh, with the right foot, gives it back out to Stephen Gibbons. Gibbons still on the ball. Another veteran on for Summerhill. Gooch back off to Mark Dempsey. Mark will carry. Gives it off to Mark Murray. The two marks are ahead again. Mark off there to, to um, Carl Dwyer. Mark Dempsey still going. He should get the ball. Give the ball to Mark. He has it. Mark should cut it, oh, there seems to be a wet patch up there, everybody's falling on it. Back to Mark Murray, keep taking your points. Back here to Keane Walsh, Keane has a shot at goals, yes. three points between the teams. Yeah, Six and a half minutes left. Not sure the undersoil heating is just working on that particular <laughs> patch. A couple of players have actually slipped and fallen under arses up there. There is an injury to a, a Boards Mill player on the far side that Gus has tended to stop play when players get injured. But thankfully, from a Trim point of view, he didn't stop play yeah. that time. And that's a bit more like it from Trim. That's that swift, uh, clinical and incisive attacking that they were shown in the early stages that's coming back into the game and we still have seven minutes and it's trim three. two twelve boards mill four nine so just the three points in it one score game three points between them it's so james ash that's injured over the far side referee goes waves on the play kick out from alan ash comes again wall goes up and gathers again in the middle of the field wall back gives it off there to the man that was down half dead a minute ago james ash now he's up and running James has it, but it's really well won there back by Lee Morahley. 
Liam O'Reilly gives it back to the Gooch. Gooch off to Sean Mahoney. Trimmer ahead again. Here we go. The little key wise. Well won by Keen Walsh. Carries the ball up to in through the 50 yard line. Gives it off to, to Carl Dwyer. Slightly over carries. Carries it on 21, 30 yards out. Carl loses possession. And it's won there by Jack Dixon who is fouled. <coughs> and it's a free out to Boards Mill. Great yeah, movement there by uh, Trim. Brilliant move by Keane Walsh over on the far side where he just spun Bonner and left him trailing. And, and Bonner wasn't too interested now in tracking back. He's getting back now all right uh, to hopefully get on the end of this free out. And he's pointing the finger, trying to uh, direct the orchestra back there now. But he was spun by Keane over on that far side and a great little move. And pity Trim didn't get a score off that to really just narrow the gap and put the pressure. But there's still six minutes left here, CJ. Three points in it. They're not dead and buried yet. No, no, it's there is six minutes left in the game. Three points between the team. Jack Dixon still on the ground for Boards Mill. Now he's up, uh, and Bonner has the ball in hand, and they'll surely look for key man Cahill Wall. Uh, there will be a bit of injury time here. Never time. <laughs> Cameraman James says Gus is not great at the injury time. There is now five well, minutes now. He didn't stop the play for injuries over on the far side. So, so Bonner still with the ball, taking quite a while to take this free. And he gives the ball across the square towards Jim Roach. Jim has it in his hand. And Jim Bird makes marvellous strides down the wing to take the ball. Jim is a big, strong man. Oh, Been tackled by McKeown. Threw the ball back there to Vinny Guy, who gives the ball in towards Eric, who didn't really want to know. And Mark Murray gets the ball. Murray moves the ball up the field. Trim looked dangerous to attack and now gives the ball on there towards. Who have we in there? 20, Keen Walsh. But it's won again by Bonner Leonard. Bonner Leonard and Cahill Wall are the real stars of this Sports Mill show tonight. Yeah. High ball there towards little Keen Walsh. Uh, won by Stephen Gibbons, but uh, he's been tackled by Harry Harlan. Stephen Gibbons continues on, but it's well done by the experienced Ke Colin McGrath. And little Keen Walsh is coming into his own here in this game. Uh, ball not gone out, ball still in play. It is a ball, it's a it's a line ball there that Chunk Leonard gives to um, Boards Mill. I think Gus might have swallowed his whistle in that tackle he got earlier on in the game. He doesn't hasn't used it a whole lot in this second half. And there it is now. Uh, so ref has blown the whistle and it's either a sideline or a free into trim. And I think there's a bit of mouthing going on and Gus may be moving it in a little bit. Uh, Gooch gives the ball back here to Harry Harlan. Back to the Gooch. Trim lead the score very badly. Four minutes left. Gooch attacking. Gooch goes down on the ground and handles the ball on the ground, and it's a free out to Boards Mill. Three and a half minutes left. Three points in the game. A lot of possession here, CJ, but they're not making the most of it. Plenty of ball over in that far wing, and they're just finding Boards Mill hard to break down now again. Bonner, big kick down the field. Hop, skip. And a jump by Stevie Gibbons and free out to trim. Gibbons is alleged to have fouled. Liam O'Reilly plays the ball down the wing. This needs to be all quick. Sean O'Mahony on to Brian McKeown. Back to O'Mahony, but it's a missed pass by McKeown. Goes away from Sean O'Mahony with Sean Newman on there to Big Vinny. Vinny gives a big ball in there towards James, or is it James Ash who's won that ball? Oh, and he's fouled by Liam O'Reilly, and that was. With uh, two, a little over two and a half minutes to go, Boards Mill have possession, three points ahead. Um, what way would the draw leave us, uh, Fergal? Uh, well, Jesus, it was confusing enough before that. That will move. It it's no, draws no good to Boards Mill. Boards Mill have four points. There's three teams above them on six. So that would only move them on to five. They need Kicked to get from the James. Oh, Mark. No. No, it's clear. No, Mark, Mark Dempsey attempted to field the ball. It left his hands, almost crossed the line, but Conny McGrath McGraw. This would be a great time to get a goal after nearly conceding one. Colin McGraw, who's played great since he came on, gives the ball on to Keane Walsh, who misses the simplest ball goal. That was so easy. Keane should have gathered that ball. Missed it. Oh, handled on the ground by Boards Mill. Fouls all around the place, but still no whistle. Keane Walsh has it. Keane wins the ball, he shouldn't have won. He didn't win the easy ball. Keane with it, gives it on to Nigel Dalvin. Nigel is marked by Mark Hatton, who did very well, Mark Hatton. Gets by Nigel, pace beat Nigel there, good pace by Mark Hatton. Carries the ball through the tackle, gives the ball on this time to uh, Alex Evers. Alex on to Dangerman, Carl Wall, 30 yards from his own goals. 
uh, nearly fouls the ball, gives a big ball down towards, cut out there lovely <coughs> by McKeown, this is on for Sean Mahoney, back to Mark Murray, Two and, one and a half minutes left plus a bit of injury time, McGrath on the ball again, McGrath takes on this man, should recycle back to Colin but oh, Mark Murray is easily dispossessed here in front of us, and it's the ball down towards James, that ball needs to beat him, and it doesn't, James Ash has the ball, can he win the ball, can he win the game for Bowlesville here, 21 yards out, White. kicks the ball wide, had the game at his mercy, one minute left on the clock, 23 points down, needs a quick kick out, yeah. that was a chance for Bowlesville to see, the trim might get one more chance but it'll have to be a goal, this out to Mark Dempsey, Mark carries the ball as he has done all match very well, gives it off there too, Draw Little might, Keane Walsh. Draw might not even be good enough for Trim either if, uh, if both O'Mahony's and Dunham or Ashburn win tonight. Little Keane Walsh with a high ball, but it's very well won there by Jim, by Vinny Guy, is it? Uh, and with only 29 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock, referee Gus blows not even the full 30 played, including the water break. There was at least another minute, to, two minutes to be played there, Fled. Oh, we had stopped it for the water break, all right, but uh, there was a couple of other injuries and that, so it was definitely blowing up uh, 30 seconds early, and that's for sure, but I'm not sure even if, it was, uh, if we were here for another five or ten minutes whether Trim would have got in for that goal they needed. They badly needed a goal, and that would have only got them to draw, um, which would have moved them on to seven points, and again, I know it depends on the results um, between the Matneys and Slane and Dunham Ashburn and Dunshockland, but if those games went to form with Ashburn uh, and O'Mahony's probably winning it would put bo uh, do both those teams through on eight points but as it stands from what we know Boards Mill joined Trim on six points um, well it was just really dependent on the other results before okay. you can call it but it's not looking good for Trim to go yeah. through just to, to sum up the match after a start that Trim made I thought this was going to be a slightly easy walk in the park and the next thing was uh, Cahill Wall took over and scored 1-3 to put Boards Mill back in the match and then it was nip and tuck the whole first half but you'd have to say on the balance of play that Boards Mill deserved to win that game. Yeah absolutely they seemed to be a, a little bit as we mentioned throughout the commentary as well they were a lot cleverer on the ball um, they fouled when they had to foul when they were under pressure and they didn't let Trim get through for scores that they probably could have got through for uh, and then Trim seemed to lose their way the game plan that worked so well from them in the first 10 minutes they didn't really recapture that type of form they showed bits and pieces of it to score a point here and a point there but they never got a sustained spell where they got four or five scores on the trot so what was it I think it was 1-4 one, 1-5 one, they had in the board after 10 minutes and managed just 1-7 for the remainder whereas Boards Mill went on and scored 4-9 in, in the remainder so you take the opening 10 minutes out of the game and Trim were well beaten OK have we any chance with all the results of staying in this uh, yeah, well, I suppose if if, you'd, if O'Mahony's were to lose, which would be surprising, or Dunham or Ashburn were to lose to Dunshockland. Well, that uh, could happen. That, that could happen. If O'Mahony's win, then O'Mahony's will go on to eight points. With that, We could take that as a given that O'Mahony's would beat Slane. So they'll go on to eight points. And that could leave it as three teams tied on the six points then. And it come down to scoring difference. Trim were beaten by what, five, is it? Or, no, three. Or, three. or three, sorry, yeah, in the end. So that will leave Trim with a plus 16 scoring difference I'm so we, sure. we have to hope Dunmore Ashburn yeah. were beaten by Dunshock so if Dunmore Ashburn were beaten by Dunshock we could end up in the final Trim could end up in the final ok uh, are we wrapping for now so uh, Mr Producer James so thanks to all the um, uh, listeners and viewers tonight uh, I don't know when we'll be back again. We have a big weekend. We wish a ladies match, isn't there, that's coming up With the ladies under-16 football final on, on Sunday morning, which I think we're broadcasting. Uh, on behalf of the club, I want to wish uh, our intermediate footballers the very, very best of luck tomorrow. We do need to get back senior. Please, God, we'll do it tomorrow. I, wish, I hope everything goes their way, and when things are not going their way, they dig in, fight as hard as they can and get us back to where we need to be. So on behalf of the Reds TV crew and the entire club for anybody that's watching from, um, for the Intermediates, we wish you all the very best tomorrow and please God we'll have um, a celebration tomorrow night. Yeah, best of luck lads. Thank you. Well done Slid.